going on guys. Got a quick comparison video. Uh, it's gonna be the uh, Slash 4x4 compared to the Arma Big Rock Crew Cab. The Slash 4x4 does have some monster truck wheels and tires, so it's uh, a little bit more of a direct competitor now with the uh, Big Rock Crew Cab. Let's go on and start in with the looks. Of course, the Slash is gonna look a lot bigger just because of that short course body, and this one does have the Dakar body on there, so it looks freaking massive compared to the uh, Big Rock body with that traditional kind of truck or monster truck styling. But let's go and pop these bodies off and see what we're dealing with on the inside of the chassis. A big, <laughs> big rock body just disappears under this freaking slash one, man. All right, so things are starting to look quite a bit closer now. So like I said, I did put some monster truck wheels and tires on this. Um, width wise are about the same, but they are about half an inch shorter than the big rock tires. But of course, these don't come stock. You can um, have tons of options on what you want to put on here, whether it's like a, you know, a Pro-Line um, Trencher or Duratrax. I even got these uh, Speed Treads Vindicators that I could pop on there. Of course, these do come with uh, 14 millimeter hexes stock, so they will work on the armor trucks, but then they also have a 12 millimeter reducer to work on anything for the, uh, the Slash or the Stampede. Stay tuned for a uh, unboxing and uh, first impressions of those, but getting back to this comparison, wheelbase is basically identical with these two trucks, and um, of course the, tr the Slash has these uh, bumpers that stick out front and back, so it is going to look a little bit longer than the Big Rock Crew Cab, but other than that, they're virtually the same size. Also looking at the chassis, the layout is exactly the same as well, so you know you have the battery on the right set of drive shaft, motor, ESC, receiver box, and then you have your steering servo. Same thing on the Big Rock. Battery on the right, center drive shaft, motor, ESC is actually on top of the receiver box, which is right here, and then you have your servo right here. All in all, about the same design. Um, as far as ease of use, both are about the same. Both are really easy to work on. Uh, the front and rear clips come off in a similar fashion as well with them. Um, you know, maybe about two to four screws on each one and then you can pop the rear off and um, you know, work on your spur gear, adjust your mesh and things like that. Of course, um, on the Arma, you only need to remove a couple screws and then you pull this tab and this whole thing pops off after you move the center drive shaft. Center drive shaft is spring loaded. Now, uh, this is plastic. The slash uh, up things up a little bit with a, an aluminum one. But again, I think Arma did a really good job Utilizing the plastic here and then also including a center brace here. I see no problems with this being plastic at all. Um, other than that, the, well, the armor is going to be a little bit heavier just because the plastics are a little bit thicker. As you can see here, this does have this taller chassis. Um, it's more of a shield for uh, dirt and muck to keep the innards clean. But um, while it is a pro, it is a little bit heavier and not only that, but uh, you can see that there's a little gap here if you get like a little pebble or a rock or a s stick or something this will jam up your steering so you got to stop and pull out whatever is blocking it from functioning and then you're back on the road whereas the slash you don't have that issue anywhere here there really isn't anything underneath as well to uh bog things down at least um at a level as, as the uh, the big rock uh, i will say that the slash the uh, turnbuckles with the uh, connector ends being metal. These ball joints are metal. The Arma has plastic ball joints. As you can see that they're almost loose. These, they fit really solid. Check this out, listen to this. You hear that? Nothing. Check this out. Bro. That is some serious slop, dude. Going back to this. Solid. That is straight solid. I do have some aftermarket parts on here, like the shocks, um, the sway bar. Other than that, all of this in here, the C-hubs and everything are stock. I do have some RPM A-arms, but that's not really going to change anything. Stock turnbuckles and everything like that. It's solid, boy. This one. Not so much. There's just all kinds of play in that. Um, see in one of my recent videos, I did say that this is one of the worst handling. Now, I was probably a little bit harsh on that. I probably didn't mean worst, but 
it's pretty bad as you can see. I mean, that ain't good, that's for sure. Other than that, part support of course goes to the Slash. I mean, the Slash is probably like the most popular freaking RC truck of all time. And there's parts by so many different companies, not only that, like every hobby shop has them. Now the Arma, this is a fairly new platform, but it's picking up, man. These things are selling like hotcakes, especially due to the low price and especially for what you get. Now I'm seeing a lot of aftermarket parts coming out from companies like Hot Racing and T-Bone Racing. Haven't really seen anything from uh, RPM just yet or Intigy, but I'm sure those are gonna be coming out pretty soon. But like I said, currently Slash takes its cake for that department. But going back to the handling on this, I did see that uh, Hot Racing is coming out, or it actually already came out with an aluminum bell crank. They actually are selling the uh, metal ball joints as a standalone kit as well and then of course you can uh fix some of this slop in the steering as you can see right here you can see that pace is kind of moving in and out right there right here you're just dealing with um you know a metal rod and then there's plastic bushings and those bushings aren't even a good fit which is causing some of that from the start now I picked up some steel bearings. Um, yeah, these bearings are the exact same size to fit in those. So there's gonna be two on each side here. So two and two makes four. And then, like I said, these are the uh, blue rubber sealed bearings. So these should fix quite a bit of the slop, um, at least in, from the source here. I know that for sure I'm gonna have to change out these ball joints if I wanna get it at least up to something like this. I'm gonna have to do that, but hoping these bearings will kind of fix some of the slop, kind of a, a low cost solution. But other than that, if you're gonna be replacing all those parts I just told you about, that's an extra about 50 bucks. So instead of this being a $320 truck, this is now like a $370 truck. <laughs> Quite a bit different in price. Um, of course, that's still not as expensive as the Slash would be, but yeah, take it or leave it, whatever you um, wanna do with it. Body posts, of course. This here is the stock body post for the slash. It's not adjustable, whereas these, they are. As you can see right here, there is an Allen screw on the sides of these, and then they go up. These can go up and down uh, by a notch or two, but at least it is adjustable. Again, these are fixed. You would have to purchase something like this, which is made by Proline, to raise or lower it, and I have this raised up just to fit that body on there. Both of them have, again, pretty similar chassis designs. Sorry about that. This one here, of course, is straight front to back. So I'm talking about the front clip, center chassis to the rear clip. That's basically a complete straight line. Here's pretty similar. So you have the front clip, center chassis, but as you can see here, the center chassis actually drops near the uh, back by about half an inch and then comes back up to the rear clip. So, um, Ground clearance is gonna be a little bit more reduced on the slash, but again, lower center of gravity equals better handling. So of course the slash is gonna handle a lot better, not only because of the chassis, but again, because this one has sway bars on it front and back. So it's gonna reduce a lot of that turning over, rolling over, traction rolling, like the uh, Big Rock is uh, kind of known for. With the Big Rock, if you wanna take any corners or turns, you gotta slow down and then make your turn. Whereas this, you could basically almost be at full throttle and still make like half a turn. You know, I mean, probably not a full crank on the steering wheel, but you can still take some turns with speed on this. What else can I say? Uh, drive shafts are pretty similar. I'd probably give the edge to the Arma. They do look a little bit beefier as far as the di diameter of these things. Again, they're, they're both plastic, but as you can see here, the slash is a little bit thinner. Uh, A-arms, again, A-arms is a similar thing. I think the uh, Arma A-arms are a little bit more beefier, especially in the rear. The plastics seem quite a bit thicker, and there's also a lot of material with this kind of crisscross pattern design here. The slash does not have that. It has, looks like one or two, actually three, of these brace points going front to back. So another point for the armor there. Uh, really can't fault the chassis. Again, like I said, they have 
a very, very similar design. Now this is a monster truck class, but this is built off the Sentin chassis, which as you all know, is a short course truck, just like the Slash. Now the Slash does come with 12 millimeter hexes. The Arma BLX stuff comes with 14 millimeter hexes, unless you move up to the Typhon, which has 17. Um, just in that regard, I would give the edge to the Slash in that department, only because 12 millimeter is kind of the standard for one tenth scale stuff. And then you can even purchase a 17 millimeter adapter to go on top of that. Whereas if you want to do it in the Arma, you would first have to convert these to a 12 millimeter hex and then get the 17. So a little bit of an edge for the Slash there. As you all know, these are not the stock shocks. <sighs> the stock shocks for the Slash look something like this. Um, actually, this is <laughs> this is one of the Slash ones. This is actually a Stampede shock with a Slash spring on it. I took the springs off and put them on my other um, HCG chassis Slash 4x4, but give you no idea. And then, of course, the ones in the Arma, very similar plastic. Um, they're not threaded. Of course, they have plastic caps as well and then they do leak as well if you take a look at this pff, leaky shock <laughs> damn and i haven't even tried to tighten this thing up and it's still leaking oil so just a bad design um i know that the typhon 6s shocks work for um, this platform so that's probably something i'll do in the future but just kind of bummed out that these shocks weren't any better quality um, other than that, talking about the electronics, I'd give the edge to the Arma. Not just because of the uh, lower price, but the uh, ESC, this is a 100 amp ESC. It's got the capacitors that are out here. It also has a built-in fan. The motor is a little bit larger as well versus the one on the Slash. This one is a little bit longer. And then as you can see here, it does come with a heatsink that is stock. Now this I had to get separately, which is a castle fan, and I'll probably have to get a fan for the ESC as well. These are known to overheat quite a bit, especially if you're running it on 3S. This, of course, 3S is no problem. It's actually built for 3S. So yeah, um, speed, of course, speed goes to the Arma as well, with it being on 3S and just the way it's geared up and everything like that. This is just faster out the box. Now this you do have to gear up and then they even tell you not to run it on like rough surfaces or something like that just to get it up to um, above 50 I believe maybe even close to 60 miles per hour but again you're only really dealing with flat surfaces they even say not to you know accelerate hard with it and everything like that of course Arma is built to bash basically even on 3s it has no problem haven't had any problems of overheating or anything like that not even close so yeah I think that's gonna sum up this video I really can't say anything else about this comparison uh, like I said, you know, there's just endless amounts of parts for the slashers. There's so much you could do with it But again, the starting price is super ridiculously high on the Armas. Of course, they're about 300 bucks This one here is 320. Like I said, if you have a problem with this right here You have to invest about another 50 bucks. So take that into consideration when thinking about the price But even with that price jump for fixing this I still would give the edge to the Arma I just think they did a really great job and kept the price down as much as possible. In my opinion, I think Arma could at least have given us metal ball joints for the uh, BLX stuff. I can understand keeping it plastic for the Mega versions, but like I said, this is kind of a, a low price, but I would still consider it a higher price truck. If you want a lower price truck, go with the Mega stuff or a brushed slash or something like that. And then yeah, something like this might have been okay, but. Something that goes 50 miles per hour, bro, really? Nah, man, this is where it's at for me. Anyways, um, really can't say one's better than the other. Of course, I would say if you had the money, you could make the Slash a, a way better product, um, just as fast as the Arma with better handling, better part supports and um, things like that. Of course, you can run so many different bodies on each one of these trucks, it's really not a big deal. These are growing in popularity and I know for sure that there's gonna be more and more parts coming out for this truck and um, all of the other line for the uh, BLX stuff. So anyways, that's really all I have to say about these two trucks. Really can't say I like one more than the other because both have their strong points as you saw in this video. 
Um, also some weak points as well. That's really all I gotta say about that. So let me really quickly just touch upon the transmitters real quick. All right, so the transmitters. Tactic comes stock with the Arma. This actually is, does not belong to this. This actually belongs to my son Slash. I actually purchased this um, after just doing research. Pretty good product. It's basic, but it's really well made. Uh, the model number is uh, Tactic TTX 300. Now, of course, this is a Traxxas TQI that like everyone knows and loves or hates. As you can tell, really cheap product, flimsy, almost toy grade, but it's done really well. Um, out of all the transmitters I've tried, I actually really, really love the grip on this thing. As you can see, it's really, really wide and it's got a lot of ergonomic design to it. Now, I have a medium sized hand, but I have pretty long fingers and this just fits like a glove, man. I mean, the trigger is like right where I would want it. Like I said, the width to this adds a lot of grip. I really love that contouring that fits right in the palm of your hand and just everything is placed really, really well. Pretty nice wheel as well, maybe on a little bit on the small side and a little bit too high and too forward for my tastes. Going to the Tactic really quick, not as wide. It's actually really kind of thin. This overall is a lot smaller in design, so it almost feels like you're holding like a kid's toy. Grip is okay, but as you can see, like it just falls out. It doesn't really like want to stay put without gripping it this it just doesn't move it's just you hold it and it just conforms to your hand like right away again i'm like nitpicking right now but <laughs> i'm trying to give you my honest opinion overall um both are pretty basic as far as adjustability you can do a lot more but again it's it's really about like holding this button down and counting three seconds and pushing you know, a certain amount of time same thing with the uh the TQI over here holding the menu and set buttons down and trying to read blinking lights and looking at a manual. You don't really get a lot of switches or anything like that. Um, this wheel, as you can see here, it's further back. It's a little bit downward. So I do like that, but I don't like how the foam, it actually moves like inward and it just gets bound up as you're trying to use it. And then you have this like awkward, like plastic rim on the outside. It's just kind of weird. I like the way that Traxxas did it where the, actually the ring is on the inside and it just doesn't push in. Because as you're steering it, you're almost pushing it in an inward direction towards the center, not pulling it out. Not sure why they put it like that. You're not gonna pull this off. Apparently it's like doing that kind of thing where you're using it, I don't know, kind of annoying. But other than that, I mean, looks wise, I think the Traxxas has a little bit more of a kind of contemporary safe design. This has more of a futuristic look, almost alien-esque. Um, so it's kind of a love it or hate it type thing. I think it's it looks okay, personally. I like the way the base looks too. But like I said, I think the ergonomics is a little bit better on the TQI. But all in all, this isn't really a, too bad of a, a radio system. I think the springs are a little bit firm, both in the trigger and in the steering wheel. This feels just right to me. Again, firm and kind of no personality to it. <laughs> That's you can say, but yeah, you get your normal and reverse gear. Uh, you don't have that on the TQI. There's probably some way to program it, but other than that, you would have to go into your receiver box and like turn the wires around, do the manual way. But I guess if anything, I'd prefer the TQI over the Tactic personally. But again, like I said, tactic, it works. It's basic, but it does everything really well. So there it is. Anyways, that's gonna be my uh, comparison on these two trucks. Hopefully you guys found uh, something here interesting. Comment below, like, subscribe, do all the usual stuff. I'd appreciate it. And yeah, hope you guys are having a great day and uh, are able to get your trucks out on the trails or the streets or whatever you're doing. All right, guys, take it easy, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.